Hello, hello, Leslie M. Thornton, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss. Today we are doing a live call with Rachel Erickson. Uh, I'm going to be bringing her on to this Instagram live. And we had a great podcast episode together on the Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss uh, podcast. Rachel's here now. Amazing. I am going to... I'll let you on as soon as you ask to join via video, I believe, unless maybe I click that. Yes, I'm going to invite you to join. Together last week. And uh, we decided to come on and do a nice Instagram live. Hey. How are you? We did it. We did it. That was so easy. So That's like, successful. Dream line <laughs> success. I love it so much. I was just sharing with people on how we did our podcast together last week. And I really just appreciated jamming with you on all the topics. Um, so the, one, the one that I thought uh, would probably be most valuable, you know, in alignment with both of us. I, I named it body image and uh, body image and fashion or uh what did i say i don't know i can't even oh and clothing choices or something what is it yeah yeah, yeah absolutely like size inclusivity and and yeah and I just choosing this for you because who the hell cares what number it is yes thank you so something that rachel and i both have in common and i'll have her introduce herself in a moment uh is the fact that we both had to get over food body and weight issues and uh how that had translated over into our confidence and into our business success and how, you know, we're helping people find that confidence in those different areas of life. Um, mine being with hypnosis for permanent weight loss, uh, helping people get that mental and emotional frame around food, body and weight through hypnosis, through neuro-linguistic programming, emotional mastery, and Rachel doing it through her practice. So if you, yeah, go ahead, introduce yourself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I own a, an apparel consulting firm where we basically come in and we become team members with these amazing brands and kind of help them do the work that they knew, need to do every day. Uh, me and my team, we've all had over 15 years of experience inside the apparel industry. And so when we come in, it's like hiring a senior level person at a price that's like way less than that. <laughs> <laughs> really fast we're really efficient we know how to work together really well and so we're able to save our clients quite a bit of money by doing that and just a journey in fashion and clothing um, we've been learning a ton about size inclusivity and what that means for the apparel industry especially as it evolves and grows and so that's just part of where we put a lot of our passion um, you know we've been working with some amazing brands who do that and yeah, it's been, an, it's been a personal journey for me too. Like as I was a kid, you know, looking at fashion magazines all the time, cause that was what I was really passionate about and having to kind of dissociate clothes from bodies. <laughs> so that was definitely a thing. Yeah. And I know, you know, especially when it starts that young, the, you know, associations that can be made in the brain that aren't necessarily the healthiest. And it's just like, we don't even realize it. Right. But if you're passionate about fashion or, you know, any kind of sports or, you know, anything that just like had like the body is involved, there are these associations of like, I need to look like that in order to get this or to look good in that or to look like that person. And, you know, the power of the unconscious mind, the first zero to 10 years of our lives is when the blueprint of the unconscious mind is laid out. And so, you know, without her even being aware of it, you know, and as when I educate people around what hypnosis is, you know, I kind of demystify it, but I'd say like, consider the fact that we've all been hypnotized from birth until now, like you've <laughs> already right. been in trance yeah. <laughs> your whole life and whatever you saw. So what, do you have any idea of what associations you made from being passionate about fashion from a young age and into your body stuff? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I definitely got into fashion at like in the mid nineties, like I'm a mid nineties like kid, I was born in the eighties. And so like supermodels were a big thing, right? And like, and I love all the supermodels. I actually just watched that documentary, the series on, on um, Apple Plus TV, which was amazing. And, and, I, and they speak about it a little bit there where it was kind of hard for people to relate to them. And they were gracing every single magazine cover and they were in every single fashion show. And so when you're seeing these same three or four body types, like over and over and over again, you think, oh, that's, that's what it needs to be. That's what I need to do. 
Yeah. You know, I think there are some other things that happened throughout my childhood. I mean, you mentioned sports. I used to play volleyball. And so, and our coach was always on us to kind of be like making sure that we were staying really fit so that we could perform at the highest level. And you know, I think that kind of gets into your head when you're really young too. And so um, there are definitely some challenges that I was hypnotized <laughs> into. I think, when mm -hmm. I yes, exactly. Yeah. And for myself, the hypnosis kind of came through parenting with my mom just being very weight conscious and you know she as a kid was teased for her weight and so she was trying to protect her child from having the same thing happen to her and so she taught me at a young age about portion control and you know all these types of things and yeah it's just still kind of taught my brain like I'm different I need to watch myself mm -hmm. I need to you know be careful and because of that it just kind of led me to a lifetime of just trying to always get skinnier, trying to get thinner. Yeah. And the impact that that had on every area of my life, you know, and we talked about that a little bit in the podcast on just, you know, for myself professionally, I just saw that, you know, my constantly being obsessed about it and not letting myself go past a certain point or whatever mm -hmm. uh, in that prevented me from going all the way in on living, you know, my life on purpose and a life authentic to me. Um, and, you know, part of breaking out of that hypnosis was realizing, like, I am not my mother. Yeah. <laughs> and I yeah, have my own unique point. makeup. Uh huh. I have my own unique, you know, life and, and priorities and way that I want to do life and everything like that. And so we talked about that as well as like fully embracing our authentic selves. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, I relate to that very much. You know, I kind of have a very like healing relationship, I think, with my mom over a lot of the same things. Um, and, you know, when you look back, you kind of, you, I don't, I'm not sure how, if you feel this way about your mom, but she was really just trying to do the right thing by me. And that's genuinely, she, her heart was in such a good place, but it, it did kind of instill a lot of interesting things when it came to, to food and counting calories and all of that at a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like such a pertinent time for that. There's so many different funny things that I see now that people are posting about, like, the 90s and all the like low fat and you know <laughs> low cal and 100 calorie packs and like now it's like oh my god like that was just like a terrible era <laughs> it was. It it was all all around us. oh my god yeah and if anybody's watching who can relate or if you have any you know what was your hypnosis whether it was sports or parenting or fashion or you know whatever it might have been um I'd love to keep the conversation going as we're chatting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also like to see that it was like the challenges that came with it also have given me the greatest gifts. Like one of the things that I coach my clients on all the time is how like you can choose to see it as like a tragedy that those things happened. And if, you know, I have a lot of clients that are like, oh my God, you know, if I only knew, you know, then what I now know, you know, I would have had such a different life. I could have done so many things differently. And it's like, yes. And, you know, we can look at it, the journey as being our greatest teacher, because if you didn't struggle with it, if you didn't go through that, then we wouldn't have found this coach that led us to these people that led us to this, that led us to that. Um, you know, and I talked to my clients too, who are like, you know, they get jaded after a certain point of like, they've tried all the diets and, invest all the money and, you know, still have the same kind of thing going on and on. And I kind of really look at it as like, I, I, I don't know if you follow Abraham Hicks at all. Oh, I don't. Okay. So on YouTube, just like tons of like spiritual kind of consciousness teachings and this type of stuff. But she talks about the difference between swimming upstream and swimming downstream and how she's saying like human beings have this way that you know, we kind of need to go through periods of swimming upstream and like making it hard for ourselves yeah. for yeah. whatever before we can get to the point of kind of putting your hands in the air and surrendering, which is what happened to me right before I found hypnosis, which is what happens usually right before all the most amazing blessings come in. It's so true. Yeah. Um, right. And then once we actually can surrender and swim downstream, which was when it came to food, body, and weight stuff, like the most terrifying process I ever went through. I don't know if you had any process like that where I just like made no food wrong and said I could have anything even after knowing all the science behind what foods were good and bad and what they did and how they could cause inflammation and disease in the body. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, I ain't dying tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So it's worth a shot, you know, for me to like, you know, 
try to heal this relationship, which I got, you know, to now have a healthy relationship with food. But um, yeah, so wherever, you know, anyone might be at on your journey of even if you've tried all the things and oh my God, I wish I found this out so much sooner. It's like, trust the process. Yeah. And um, all of it has led to here. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I so agree with that. And I think, you know, the best rewards come after you've had a little bit of hardship on like, I don't know. I, I just, I learn so much better if I've made a few mistakes along the way and I've had a few failures along the way because those, they resonate with you, right? They stick with you. And if you're constantly succeeding and everything is just always going super well, or you're always losing the weight that you want to lose, like you just don't, you can't apply the learnings as easily. They don't stick with you the same way that like a mistake or a failure might. And even they're not, they might not even be mistakes or failures. It's just how you see them. But I think that is truly the part that teaches you how to get to where you want to go. And so it sucks to hear. And like, I'm in it with like a bunch of different things, even with my business, because it, and it's really hard to hear, you know, you got to go through the trenches to be able to get to the other side. But it's true. It really is just true. And it sucks when you're in the trenches. But um, I love that you're pointing that out. There's a book called Go for No. And the whole pre have you read that book? I haven't, but I've heard of it. It's freaking powerful. It's such a quick read, but it's so inspiring. And it's just about like the most successful people, like they fail faster. Like they're, mm -hmm. they're intentionally failing as fast as possible. Yeah. <laughs> because that's how they know they're going to get the results, you know, faster. So yeah. yeah, you're right. There's just so much gold that comes from the fails and the lessons learned. And, you know, it's all part of the journey as well. So, oh. um, I'm curious because, you know, it's post holidays and I'm sure people are, you know, feeling the feels about whatever <laughs> food binding weight, maybe some if they're tuning into this title of this, but like, I know what my experience is like with holidays now compared to what it was like before. So how are your holidays and even like bringing in some of like the fashion, like, do you like choose different clothes or like, how do you, how do you do it? It's interesting. You know, we as like freelancers and consultants in the fashion industry, there's kind of like this meme that goes on where it's like, this is what people think we wear. They have this like all these like cute designer outfits and this is what we really wear. And there's like hoodies and like yoga pants. And that's, you know, we wear what pretty much everyone else wears, especially as we work from home a lot. Um, so I would say over the last week or so, I've worn a lot of just comfy, comfy clothes around the house, um, making sure that I'm comfortable. That's definitely something that I've, like kind of clung to over the last couple of years as I've been healing this part of myself is like, I just want to feel good in my clothes and any clothes that ever used to be too tight, but I clung to them because I was like, someday I'm going to fit back into this, or this is my only like size small shirt that I'm going to keep. Like get rid of it. I, I got rid of a lot of that stuff. I just want to be comfy in my clothes. Yeah. So I think that's a big thing about wearing the size that actually fits you because at the end of the day nobody knows what that label says on the inside and nobody's really looking yeah. so good feel good in your clothes and it's going to show like outwardly too i think in confidence i think when it comes yeah. to food you know like around the holidays i've done a lot of healing around food i used to constantly diet and this is a time of year where i do kind of indulge a little bit and really let myself enjoy what's happening around me with my family and with cooking i love to cook Nice. And so we've done a lot of cooking and made a lot of cookies over the last few weeks. <laughs> and they were delicious. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, it's so true. That was a thing we talked about on the podcast was around, you know, the importance of not having things around that are not your size. Yeah. <laughs> um, and for me, that was like such a breakthrough of, um, you know, getting like, it's really about mastering being in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think people, and I would like, wish I could like, slow this down so i guess i am by saying it right now um but it was it was like challenging for me to get that when it came to like getting rid of clothes that didn't fit me whether they were too big or too small and like only having what actually made like it's like okay but i have a lot of clients who resist that step of the process um yeah but the power of actually like being in the present moment of like this is what i am now this is what fits me now now, 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 is like, it gives you this, it changes the energy up entirely of like, from here, anything is possible. Like, it frees up all of this extra mental bandwidth that was going towards the past and towards yeah. the future that just allowed me to focus on now. 
which allowed me to feel into what my body was feeling now, mm-hmm. which allowed me to make decisions for what I wanted to fuel my body with or how I wanted to take care of myself now versus constantly thinking about that size four dress in the closet waiting for me and the anxiety that that would cause that would actually cause me to want to run to the cabinet faster. Uh, yeah. You know, it made no so sense. Funny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well and I, you know, I could, I won't talk on this too long because I can get really nerdy about it, but there's, mm-hmm. there is <laughs> real like size standard in the apparel industry. It's something that we really struggle with as an industry. And you know, a lot of people, one of the, one of the most read blog posts that I ever wrote was something on like, why do sizes fit differently from brand to brand? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a, very frustrating point I think for people as consumers and so it's there just is no standard like each brand is allowed to do whatever they want they are allowed to nominate whatever body size or type they want as their their like ideal body type and so when you go into store a and try on a size large versus store b they could fit completely different I mean I I talk a little bit about like when I go shopping at the store you know, I consider myself like a medium or a large in some places. And when I go into some stores, I fit into an extra small. And I'm like, you know, just this, I don't know, the vanity sizing that has started to happen and the like lack of standards in that area makes it really hard to say like, I I can't feel bad about any of this. None of it means anything. That's right. So, you know, I've had a couple of friends who were like, they they were going to a wedding or something and they were like, I'm going to fit into this size four dress. I'm like, well, what does that mean to you? Like, it's a size four here, but it's a size 12 somewhere else because they do a totally different numbering system and it's a size zero over there. Like, wow. Where was comfortable. That's a good good thought experiment too, of just being like, okay, if someone has that like ideal size that they want to be or the ideal number on the scale, it's like, okay, what, what meaning do you have attached to that number and to that size? It's like, what came to you first? I would imagine a lot of people would be like, well, that means that I'm good enough or I'm skinny enough or I'm, pretty enough or I'm you know worthy enough and it's just like you know and this is where we have it backwards you know? it just doesn't mean anything None of that doesn't like your size doesn't mean anything about who you are at all yeah. Yeah. and Absolutely. there are so many people in our society who have a lot of judgments around that and the people who have those judgments also are in the trap that, like with you <laughs> like they're in the you know, like the ones who care are also needing help as well, yeah. you know, Absolutely. and like the ones who literally like just don't even think about that, which I think they're like when I was in it, like I used to, I thought that every single person would think that, you know, oh, yeah. like if my body was bigger, like every person was thinking that everybody was judging me, everybody was, you know, and it's just like, actually no it's just my unhealthy mental and emotional you know reality with this and again the only people who care are the ones who also need help so there's a whole bunch of people who literally just accept you as you are like even if your body is bigger or smaller or they just don't care yeah and they they just care about your personality and that you feel confident and that you feel good and so we're close to do that like I you know that's and easier I've met people of all different exactly of course i've met people of all different you know sizes and shapes and all the things and like you can tell who is insecure with like the things they'll say and it doesn't matter what size you know they are they'll just be like oh i look bad or like the, their confidence will be lower their energy will be lower you know and like more mm-hmm. to themselves and you know and zero judgment is just like just noticing um yeah. So like doesn't matter either way but then you can also meet someone who is of any size any shape and they're like the most confident person you're like oh my god i'm so inspired by that person like they look amazing like that just like has everything to do with you knowing who you are like being authentic within yourself like being happy being confident like you're saying like you know and just being present you know it's just really just mastering that yeah Yeah. that's such a beautiful way to say it i love that Mm -hmm. It's just like everything. It's literally everything. Yeah. And I find that like people who also struggle with body stuff oftentimes will have like relationship challenges as well. Yeah. And it's kind of yeah. like it goes like hand in hand where it's like, 
in order to be like in a healthy relationship you also need to be good with yourself like authentic like confidence here present yeah i mean i know, so. i recognize it a lot more now like as i've kind of come starting to come like the other side of this journey and on days when i still feel like oh i don't i don't feel good or i don't look good or or whatever like i do recognize it in my relationship cuz i'm not i'm not offering all of myself in every situation and so i'm i'm hiding myself or i'm not interested in like i don't know snuggling on the couch or something like that cuz i feel gross and that's just it it leads to relationship issues and so it does it, it definitely goes hand in hand and that confidence and just that like comfortability with yourself and knowing that you know I deserve to be loved and this relationship is all about that like it's it's huge it is and then we, we could go into career and into business and it's like <laughs> similar right and it's like we can't really escape this and nor should anybody want to um in my opinion because it's just like it's the most beautiful you know it's can be challenging which is why i've hired many coaches to help me through hard times <laughs> to get where i want to go and you know to experience like i have clients i think i said this on the podcast just like have the trees always been this green like oh. just like these things that they're just like it's the everyday mundane things that can be just the best i love that. you know and yeah the quiet and the not needing to distract yourself 24 7 with listening to something or you know all the different things to just distract us from what could be going on in the background that's just preventing you from having absolutely everything that you want to have so it's so true yes 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 yep and then food you know for me it's just it's not sparkly anymore like the way that it used to be you know i was just in philadelphia today and there's um oh, the reading market what is it called anyway it's like one of the major whatever and it's just this huge and it's got everything you could ever imagine it's all amazing but like in in the past, you used to be like, oh my god, like these things that would be like calling your name and like I have to get this, and I have to get that, and like this and that, and it's just like literally like what am I in the mood for right now? Yeah, I could take it or leave it. Like it's not, it's just it's just cool. Like I appreciate more of like just the fact that it's there and there's people around and all the different things to look at and you know everything like that. But um you know, the old me, I remember having like a birthday and it'd be like a field trip to all my favorite. Yep. Like I'd want an Annie Ann's pretzel and then I'd want a cookie thing. And then I want a frozen yogurt thing. And then I'd want this meal. And like everything was revolves around the food. And then the opposite end of that, when I would be dieting, everything would revolve around not food, yep. like everything that I could to stay away from it. Like it was both ends of the spectrum. Yep. And now it's yep. just like the constant back and forth. Yep. And now it's just, you know, it's just all of it. It's just whatever I want to do, whether it's food or people or life, or it's just all this beautiful tapestry of anything and abundance. And it's just like a really beautiful space to be in. So it really is. You know, my husband and I were just having this conversation because we were starting to think about like, like every holiday, kind of like this Christmas, right? Like what kind of things are we indulging in? What are we cooking? What kind of sweets are we making? we've kind of been like that for a really long time and we have these like traditional meals and stuff like that at certain holidays. And we literally had this conversation the other day. Where we were like, how do we maybe flip this to something a little bit different? Like how do we, you know, find a different way to celebrate things? Cause it's losing its luster, like mm -hmm. having like a specific meal or going to get a specific food or something to celebrate or even because it was a bad day. And so I want some sort of comfort, like all of that is starting to like, really decrease in value as we kind of go on this journey together. And, um, and so, yeah, like what are the things we could do instead? Could we go travel? Could we, you know, go for a walk? Could we end up in a certain place? Or it's, it's just a lot more, I think, interesting. It's a lot more of a well-rounded life as opposed to like evolving or revolving everything around whatever meal <laughs> is coming up. Yeah, exactly. And if anybody's watching revolves their life around whatever meal or whatever special treat you can have next, you can, you know, put your hand up and relate here for sure. But yeah, it's like, you can't see outside of it, though, when you're in it. It's like, that's the only thing that I was able to see in before. Um, but once I and for anybody watching, like, I just think there's you just get to this certain knowing within your inner self of like it's actually time like hey actually I do like have a food thing I do have a body thing like I've had it my whole life like I remember when it went from like passion 
where it'd be like, oh, I remember going to a therapist at one point in college and I was just like, she was like, oh, do you like exercise? And I was like, oh, I'm like addicted to exercise. And she's like, well, that could be a problem too. And I was just like, <laughs> oh no, it's not. And she's like, well, if it ever is, let me know. And it was like two years later. And I was like, remember when you said that? Like it is actually now, you know? So, but it yeah. wasn't. So it's like, it isn't an issue until it is for you, you know? And I got to a place where it was like, this is an issue. I have like a, this is, you know, this is beyond being health conscious. This is beyond, you know, just like, oh, I'm, you know, passionate about food. It, it was like, nope, you know, this is real. So, you know, for anyone watching, wherever you're at on your journey, whether you're still in it and just lo loving it, it doesn't feel like a problem, but you know, same as what my therapist said to me, I'm not a therapist, I'm a coach, but it's just like, if it ever is, you know, you can tag us or remember us or whatever for whatever your needs are um with that said i'll let anybody who's watching if you do um know that 2024 is your year to get free from diet mentality and you want to do the inner work to kind of have life feel more exciting than just what's on your plate or the next meal coming up or you know if you have any anxiety about that kind of stuff we have um the first ever year end offer that we're doing so it's a thousand dollars off our fast track to freedom program which is our six week signature program. Uh, we have an extended payment plan, um, so you can take your time paying it off. Uh, we are also throwing in three additional months of emotional mastery group coaching. So it's a total of four and a half months of support. Um, That's an amazing it, <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. So um, if that speaks to anyone, you can head to our website at hpwl.co and book a call, it expires on December 30th and for anyone watching uh for you rachel i'd love to hear i know we talked about this in the podcast but you work for like it's anyway if someone's like okay i want to hire her personally for this who's watching right now like what's the best way for them to yeah. know yeah absolutely so what we're really focusing on right now is just getting good information out into the world about the apparel industry you know, we've been doing a ton of research, trying to find out where the right resources are that we can point other people to when they're asking us questions and we're like, oh crap, it's not out there. <laughs> so we're putting that together right now. I'm building um, an online course to help teach like the actual ins and outs of what happens in the inside the apparel industry. Um, and so that will be coming out in February. If you're interested in learning more about that, go to thebusinessofapparel.com where you can read all about that. And then we have a ton of free content on there as well. We have a blog. We have a vlog where we do a lot of different video teaching. Um, and then the weekly podcast, uh, which Leslie will be on here soon. I'm so excited to have you on. And, um, and so, yeah, as much information as we can just share for free, we're doing that right now. So if you're interested at all in the apparel industry and just want to learn a little bit about it, yeah, thebusinessofapparel.com is where you can find us. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Oh my gosh, I love having these conversations with you. Um, love, like, it's kind of like a secret alignment that we didn't even find out about until after we spent all these podcasts. Like, I was just like, this girl's super authentic. I love her energy. Let's connect and be on podcasts. And then you listened and you were like, oh my God, I got over the whole food, body, and weight thing too. And I'm talking about size and food. And I'm going to say the word wrong. That's like, okay. Inclusive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I appreciate. Um, so I'm really glad that our pads cross. Thanks. And yeah, for anyone watching right now, I um, would love to hear any takeaways that you're getting from this conversation or, you know, where you're currently at with your health journey, because I do believe it's a never ending journey. There's only, you know, more that can be added in or, you know, looked at when it comes to our ongoing health and well being. Um, so would love to hear that. Um, and then yes, check out both of our podcasts. So hypnosis for permanent weight loss. And again, yours, Rachel. The Business of Apparel podcast. Yeah, exactly. And Rachel's podcast uh, that I just interviewed her on will be up um, very soon. And it's also live in our Facebook group, Hypnosis for Permanent Weight Loss Community uh, Facebook group. So amazing. Any final words you have for anyone? This is so fun as we wrap up. No, yeah, I love doing these. So anytime you want to jump on, Leslie, just let me know. It's just okay. fun to talk to the community. Yeah, and yeah, and always to you. Game because I feel like a lot of people popped on and, um, you know, I just, especially right now, it's just such a huge time to talk about it. And, um, yeah, I just think that's an important thing as always. So amazing. So yes, sending only good energy out to everyone post holiday season tonight and just love yourselves right where you're at. 
And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments and Rachel and I will be happy to answer. Yeah. Have a great night. And thanks so much, yeah. Rachel. We'll see you again Thank soon. You All right. Bye. Bye.